We'll all walk into the tavern. <laughs> I do know a drag strip who might be up to that. Vinegar, Sue, uh, Glitter, <laughs> please. Right, we are streaming currently. Um, hi, welcome to Adventurers Wanted. Hey. And this is our 62, I want to say. Hour 62 out of 250. Um, just so you're aware, this is a relaxed performance. That means that uh, there's no loud, loud sudden noises. The light should stay like this. We've been having a bit of an issue with the lights, but we think, or I think we might have fixed it. So we should be fine. Um, if you need to leave at any point, uh, just say hello for a breather. More than welcome to head out and come back in any time during the hour. Uh, and we have relaxed attitudes and movement and sounds in the audience to prevent that people try to stay still and quiet for an hour. Um, you don't look like you need a hearing loop headset, but if you did need one or something like that, my name's Chloe. I'll be over there to give you a wave if you need anything. And I'll hand over to Alex, who is our GM for this hour. Hello! Hello, stream. Um, Good morning. Chloe. Um, welcome, this is Adventures Wanted. For any of you who don't know what this is, this is a tabletop role-playing game. <coughs> what that means is that each person here is playing their own unique character, and I and the Games Master will play the rest of the world. I'll describe the places, the people, and the things that they encounter. I'll tell them things that happen, and they will tell me things that they would like to do. And sometimes we might use dice rolls to determine what happens, whether they succeed majestically or fail hilariously. <laughs> All of our players are crew members aboard a naval research vessel known as the Spirit of the Horizon, which, on a recent mission, was unexpectedly and magically transported to a completely new and unknown world. Now the crew have to figure out how to get home, whether that's by fighting monsters, exploring islands, making allies, or by some other means. Most recently, they found themselves embroiled in a diplomatic mission after many missions of fighting and violence. Yeah. They have been tasked by a, a queen whose life they saved recently to head to a new land, the name of the land is Rorstuhl, and to um, intercede in an ancient, long-running battle between two forces. The Komodo, a race of lizard-like humanoids, and the Katafu, uh, a race of tall, uh, thick-skinned, long, black-haired, uh, ugly-faced uh, humanoids. Um, they have uh, met both sides. Um, various members of the party have been dragged along to go to a party on the other side of the wall. Uh, on the other side of the battlefield. Um, and most, most recently, uh, they had a quick fight with a huge giant ape in the forests, uh, rescuing uh, a young, or a middle-aged Komodo woman uh, by the name of Vize, who has encouraged them all to come back to the villa where the party is happening and to, um, to talk to the people there uh, about their mission and what has brought them here. That's where we're going to jump back in. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to go round the table. I'm going to ask everyone to introduce themselves, the name of their character, what their character is or does, and um, one thing about their character that would mean that other people on board the ship would be aware of or know that character, how, how they interact with the ship and the, and the personnel on the ship. I'm going to start on my right. Hi, um, I'm Florence, and I'm playing Aya, who is a human rogue. Um, she was a stowaway on this ship um, un until they landed <coughs> on an island and now she has been sort of embroiled into the crew and relationships are still a slightly uncertain. Thank you. I'm James. I'm playing a Fat Kevin, the uh, human <laughs> fighter, or as he prefers to be known, Fat Kevin the Bloated. <laughs> <laughs> People on the ship know exactly who he is because he's normally the one that's blocking a door because he's stuck. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Chaz, I'm playing Captain Golan Height, who is the captain of the Spirit of the Horizon. Uh, currently quite enjoying the diplomatic mission because he's on a bit of soul searching after doing quite so much killing. He's wondering if his barbarian rage is starting to take over his mind. Oh, and also he has a pet griffin called Chauncey. <laughs> 
I am Will. I'm playing a halfling rogue called Gregor, who uh, passed out while drinking in a tavern and woke up on this research vessel. <laughs> From time to time, he still does pass out and end up in other places, but we'll see where this takes us. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, um, Goran, as the only surviving member of the party that were walking into, um, into this villa, um, They're all still alive, it's just... Uh, yeah. It, he'll explain. What <laughs> you see is, uh, beside you, where once were Galbert and Ulmorn, you, once again, that familiar metallic tang in yeah. the mouth, that strange sort of magical smell, yeah. and the golden light fizzes around them, and then <laughs> they are there, no longer there, and in their place, instead, you see the characters around you. Um, you have been magically teleported off of the ship into the middle of this. It's about 10, 11 <coughs> o'clock at night, so what were your characters doing on board the ship immediately prior to feeling the golden light fizz around you and you disappearing? It's, this is the first time it's happened to you, but you are aware it has happened to many before you. Aya, what were you doing on board ship? Um, I was sitting on the side of the deck practicing knife tricks. Wonderful. So you appear in the room with a knife in your hand, twizzling it between you. Oh your... yeah, no, like like I have a short sword. So oh. it's I don't know. I'm trying to <laughs> cool. Sort of, yeah. Um, Kevin, the bloated, holding a half-eaten block of cheese. <laughs> I appear looking very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, Gregor? Well, uh, I was uh, making use of my rapier to cut the ropes and the rum barrels just to try and get right in there. Um, so uh, as I was teleported, I was trying to take a swipe and I'm now flat on my face. <laughs> so you appear flat on your face, rapier out on the floor of the thing. As I was saying, we're here on a peaceful diplomatic mission. <laughs> um, what is that? Do you mind that? if oh, I Kevin, finish this? Yes. <laughs> what? Do you mind if I finish this first? Can you at least finish it outside? It's a huh? very small dwelling. <laughs> the two Komodo who are on the, the level above you, on this sort of balcony level uh, with a yeah with a, a balustrade, um, the the tall muscular uh, <coughs> female Komodo wearing the tapestry like robes, and next to her her, her shorter squatter husband um, who is wearing like uh, clerical robes, and on his top of his head he sits this massive silver dragon's mask. Um, he looks shocked and surprised and starts muttering under his breath um, sort of incantations, not spells, but, but uh, prayers. Um, and she, like, assumes this incredibly disdainful, haughty look as she peers down over mm -hmm. the balustrade and, and, and sort of surveys the people and says, Is this some kind of trick? No, no, no tricks. Just something that happens to us which we can't really explain. But I assure you that we're on the level. And j just stand up, Gregor. <laughs> <laughs> Roll persuasion. <laughs> to, to who? Uh, <laughs> to me. To, 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 the, to you. To the Komodo. <laughs> to me. To you. Right. Persuasion. Great start, crit fail. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she is... <coughs> Absolutely not convinced that you that this is not some kind of trick, mm. uh, and she starts to look around the room. She calls down, um, and I notice now as you've entered the room that um, although there's a party going on, it's starting to, to come towards its mm. end. Around the room are guards, right. um, and she uh, she calls out to the guards around the room, and she says, "Hold these people here, the rest of you, into the forest. Check there are no more katafu around." Could I offer the guards a drink to try and make them a little more calm? Uh, you could try. Roll me a... Persuasion? Yeah. What are you offering them? I've got a little, uh... Just a hip flask full of rum. A hip flask full of rum. Where did you get that rum, Gregor? <laughs> <laughs> found it. You found it? Yeah. I'll be speaking to the ship's bartender about this. <laughs> the captain is a terrible alcoholic. That's good. 14. 14 plus yeah. 2. Plus 2, it's 16. 16. 19. Um, the guard, uh, who is a, sh a shorter, 
um, Komodo scales, sort of sandy, dusty colour, uh, stalks up to you, and he's carrying a, a, a short sword. Uh, he, stalk, he stalks up to you, and there's about four, five, six of them around you, and he just sort of stands there. He looks down, holding, he's holding, sort of in that kind of like, don't make me use this. <laughs> um, and he looks down at your proffered thing. He kind of <laughs> sniffs at it and just disdainfully bats it away from you. Um, that was some good run, that one. And, and you notice as you look around the party that there are um, sort of goblets on trays and on the sides, uh, part empty. Um, <laughs> are you going to be mind sweeping? <laughs> this, this room has recently had quite a party in it. And uh, this is not the first booze that anyone has seen in this room this evening. Yeah. So uh, if anyone wanted to have had a little cheeky drink uh, while they were on duty, they would have already taken the opportunity to do so. We will wait here. Uh, we, we mean you no harm. We're not going to do anything stupid. We're just going to stay calm, aren't we, everybody? Yes, well, good, yes, calm, I, I, yes. I quite understand now this might look a little unnatural. Yes, I, I understand that too. Where, where is, um, where's the person who led us here? Uh, Vise. Vise. Vise is in front of you, yeah. um, between you yeah. and, and them. Yeah. Uh, and she says, My lady, I do not know who these people are, but, but they helped me. The apes returned. Well, one of them did. And, well, w without the help of this... And she looks around and notices that they're not the same people, apart from Golan, and says, With the help of... Well, at least this one and his missing friends. We managed to, to send it back into the forest. I don't think they're with the Katafu. Uh, forgive me, mistress, if this is not my place, but I think we should hear them out. And the Komodo above looks down and she sort of she, um, her husband is stood beside her, and he's still muttering. What you hear is this kind of... It's a language you don't understand. Um, roll me an insight check, everybody. Ooh, not good today. Three, Five. seven. Uh, Twelve. You are pretty sure that this is kind of a racial language. This must be a language that they speak to each other in. Um, it's surprising that they speak common, but uh, increasingly you're finding that uh, a lot of people do. Is there sign of the other male Komodo I ran into previous? No. No, he's gone. He yeah. has <laughs> disappeared off. Um, for, for, for context, the, the woman who's just led you in here uh, was out in the forest engaging in a, um, a, a late night rendezvous oh, nice. with a, an older Komodo gentleman um, who did not avail himself particularly valiantly um, in the fight uh, and has run off now to, uh, to go home to his family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Um, uh, bad, bad boy. Um, so the, the lady of the household looks down, uh, having heard this, this uh, plea from her, from her friend and... Um, I don't know, you, I think you probably assume by now, given the deference shown, yeah. that there's a kind of relationship there that is based on like her being the, the lady of the house and her being her support. Mm. Um, and she, she says, she sighs, she, she smacks her husband and says, stop with the stupid muttering. And she looks out over you and says, I will hear you, but not tonight. <laughs> you have entered at the end of our most important feast. It has been a long day. We have lost family, and the feast has relinquished your weapons. They will be safe with us. I will offer you sparse but simple accommodation within this house and tomorrow you can talk to us and she looks at you as if to say are you content roll me a perception check perception check two bad rolls out of the game let's see what we can do now come on that's a little bit better for 14. um 
Is phrase a question? It's not a question, is it's it? It's a statement. It's a statement. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, a, it's a challenge. Yeah. We are guests in this house, but we best do what the lady says. Yes, I'll uh, un unfasten my sword and hand it over to a guard. And say, just to check, I can, uh, I can keep my snacks. <laughs> <laughs> I, the Captain, I don't like this. I don't want to give them my, my weapons. Uh, the Komodo guard that you handed your weapons over to, um, he takes a sniff at your, what, the cheese I assume you still, <laughs> what, what's left of it, and he sniffs at it and there's a, 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 a revolted, he's, he's not keen. I don't think that they're particularly into dairy. Mm. <laughs> um, I'm just going to very, very slowly start unfurling my weapons because it's the maul, <laughs> then one hand axe, <laughs> then two, <laughs> then all four of my javelins. Yeah. <laughs> Small... Pile grows in the middle of the room. Um, anyone else? Anyone not? Um, ah, yeah, we're, we're all bedding down for the night and we're giving up our weapons, so there'll be no need for us to sneak around. Okay. I mean, I still have booze on me, so my body can become a weapon. <laughs> we're all fine, guys. <laughs> I very reluctant, very, very reluctantly, with a lot of evil looks, throw my weapons down on the pile. All of them, wonderful. I'm still sending that. <laughs> well, I, I haven't hidden, I can't hide a short bow on my person, yeah. and I appeared with my short sword out, <laughs> so. <laughs> that is true. I'm, um, I'm just doing my version of a message cantrip, which is. <laughs> <laughs> you hear no response. Um, wonderful, uh, a small pile of weapons appears in the middle of the room. And uh, she looks down. It's all right, Chancellor. Willingly, happily, and um, and says, "Very well. The guards will show you to a room. In the morning, we will deal." Um, and she stalks off out. Uh, her husband following, sort of uh, re reluctantly scuttling along behind her. Um, and uh, the guards show you to their rooms. Uh, or to your rooms. Um, there are two rooms next door to each other, uh, both of which contain two cots. Um, and uh, they show two of you into the first room. Uh, I don't know which way you want to do this. Mm. Um, and two of you into the second one. Um, the people who were shown into the second room, you notice that as, uh, as the first two people are shown in, uh, two guards just fall into lockstep and stand sentry yeah. either side of the doorway. Um, and then two more guards continue on and uh, stand outside the other room as you are let in. Would you like to have any conversations? Or would you like us to jump forward to the morning? Are we, are we in two different rooms? You are so in two separate rooms. Who did, who did they lead into who? Because uh, I can't have a conversation through a wall. It's kind of <laughs> up to you guys. I mean, would you, like, <coughs> two of you? By two of you? Might as well, sense. by table, yeah. makes sense. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So all you get is... <coughs> um, I have a look around the room. What's in there? It's very basic, very simple. There are, there are two small wooden cots mm -hmm. with uh, stuffed mattresses. Um, <coughs> and, uh, a couple of blankets on them. Um, uh, a chest, small chests for just putting things in. Uh, the windows mm -hmm. are small. Um, they don't open, uh, but they're not barred. But mm -hmm. they are glazed. They may be a foot by... When you're saying cool. small cots, is that small enough that it may be an issue of uh, someone who is perhaps a little larger than usual <laughs> may want to fit on one? Uh, is he too fat for the bed? Would I, be, would, I be, would I be looking around and thinking, right, am I sleeping on the floor then? Um, the cots are sized for Komodo, who are about five foot tall. <laughs> I'm sleeping on the floor. <laughs> well, I'd um, like to stick my head out of the door with the guards on me. I don't suppose anyone could bring some meat for Chansey, could they? Um, the guards, the guards look at your bird, and they look at you, and one of them says, that thing's big enough, and closes the door in your face. Well, rude. Um, uh, uh, I have a oh, rifle through the room. All the drawers, under the mattresses, between the floorboards, yeah. everything. Uh, what are you looking for? Um, literally anything that might have been of use or something that might have been hidden by a previous occupant. Roll an investigation check. <coughs> Come on. Uh, ten. You find five copper pieces. Cool. I'm taking those. 
<laughs> and um, <clears throat> not much else. Bit of a tiny little bit of rope. Okay. Um, I might do the same as a plan A. Do an investigation. <laughs> Roll me an investigation check. <laughs> twenty. Uh, a natural. Natural. Yeah. Nat twenty. <laughs> what are they gonna find? This is a different room. So in this room, um, you uh, you find uh, four gold pieces, um, and as you open up one of the chests beside the beds, um, you spot in uh, in the corner of it a something <laughs> a hold caller, uh, um, a a pile of papers. Um, they're in kind of like a, uh, a, a, a container, um, like they've been tucked inside of a folder. Um, uh, do you investigate it? Yes. It's sheet music. Ah. In, in, in the meantime, <laughs> as he's scurrying around the room, I'm just sitting on the bed with Chelsea going, and the key thing you need to understand is when a rum barrel says CAP on it, that's specifically for the captain. <laughs> I just want to make that absolutely clear. Um, Labels mean nothing to me. I stick my head out the door. Uh, the moment the door opens, y the two guards who are stood either side of it on the outside, mm -hmm. they snap in, they look at you, and they're like, yes? Hi, um, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know how much you know about our race, um, but you see, every month, um, I sort of bleed. Uh, oh. <laughs> I really, I just really need to find a bathroom or a washroom because there's going to be blood everywhere, and I, I don't want to ruin your sheets. And I mean, please, could I? Roll persuasion. Oh, come on. Okay, this is a realistic interaction. It's with advantage. <laughs> uh, uh, persuasion, eighteen. Um, he sees that you are in discomfort and knows a little of what you may be <laughs> feeling, but uh, yes, um, only uh, by <laughs> hearsay. Um, and he sort of looks across to his companion uh, and says, um, we mustn't leave. Uh, uh, and then he shouts down the corridor, reinforcements, reinforcements. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and from the end of the corridor, back out of the, from the room you came to, uh, two more guards stalk down the corridor towards you and uh, and they're like they sort of rush as if th there's a danger uh, mm -hmm. they're kind of expecting a danger um, and uh, they stand there in front of you and they're like yes um, I, I was just wondering if there was a washroom I mean I was just explaining to this lovely gentleman here that I'm I, you know it's that time of the month and there's a lot of blood and you know I don't I don't want to get it everywhere and they uh, they nod um, and the two of them sort of stand back to allow you to exit out of the room. Um, you are going to be going to a bathroom mm -hmm. with an armed guard. Great, okay. Can I hear any of this through the door? <laughs> Roll me a perception check. Uh, 15. You can hear voices, but you can't work out what they're saying. Sir, I have a plan. Yeah. Oh, if I God. lie on the floor, <laughs> yes, and then you shout as if I've died suddenly, Maybe they'll come in and we can jump them. We're not in prison, <laughs> Swiftfoot. Uh, we are literally sleeping here one night. Not everything has to be a battle or a jailbreak <laughs> or a scuffle. What if we throw the sheet music at them? I tell you what I'm going to do, Swiftfoot. I am getting into bed with Chauncey, yeah. and we are going to go to... I've just got Chauncey on my head. Aww. And we are going to go to sleep. And I suggest you do the same. <laughs> a weird cat. He nuzzles up inside the... Um, I have a, a look at the guards. What have they got on them? Um, guard stuff. Do they have any little keys or anything that might be of value? No, no, they've got weapons. They've got a, a small short sword, uh, a, a little pouch on here, which is, uh, I mean, you can try and steal stuff from them. Yeah. Um, they're wearing very basic clothing, mm -hmm. like almost like sort of just shorts, okay. um, and then uh, 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 padded leather armour. Okay. Um, uh, as they walk me to this washroom, I'm having a look around. <coughs> like, is it far away? Um, it's at the end of the corridor. It's okay. back down. You go, you go uh, back the way you came, and instead of turning left to go to where you are, uh, you just go slightly further to the right, and it's just there at the end of the corridor. Okay, great. So I get into the bathroom. Is there a window in this bathroom? No. It's just Sorry. a... It's, uh, it's, it's basically, uh, I believe the word you would use is a dunny. Um, okay. It's a hole in the ground. 
uh, with a wooden lovely. seat. How how far down? Uh, you want to peer down? Yeah. Romy, uh, have you got? Uh, you're human, aren't you? <coughs> yeah. So you can't see in the dark. No. <coughs> it's totally dark. Romy, a perception check at uh, disadvantage. Fourteen. Uh, you peer down the hole, uh-huh. and uh, a, uh, a really horrendous smell emanates from it. I'm used to it. You look down, and you reckon it's possibly about four, five. As you peer into the corners, you see that perhaps it's about five or six feet down. Okay. But in the centre, it's closer. Yes. Yes. Um, that is good to know. Um, anything else in this bathroom I can swipe? Uh, you could take some toilet paper. <laughs> um, I mean, it's very, very basically okay. furnished. Cool. Um, but I have, I have a plan of escape if I need it. Is my thinking. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it's great. down the dunny. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Get I return back. Shawshank Redemption. It. Yeah. <laughs> um, wonderful. Uh, oh, you're back. I missed you. Oh, I did not miss you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. Um, it's my feelings, you know. The night is long, the night is dark. <laughs> and that's why he eats. <laughs> <coughs> you uh, settle down after short conversations and um, uh, Aya, you, you climb into the small cot. Um, it's a little, it's almost slightly too short for you, but um, it's more comfortable than you anticipated. Uh, Kevin, the floor is less comfortable than you hoped, <laughs> but That's it, fine. it's nevertheless, uh, it's better than breaking the bed. Um, and uh, the, uh, you, you have a, a fitful, restful night of sleep, um, and the sun rises in the morning, um, and you are, both rooms are awakened by a sharp... On the, on the door. Nope, Chazzy, it's fine. Chazzy, get me. Chazzy. <laughs> oh, it's like the room service. <laughs> Do you say that out loud? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um, ah, daytime. The door. Ah, daytime. The door, the door to your room um, slams open, and it's the two guards. Or, no, it's one of the guards that you saw last night, and a new guard who's obviously replaced him. Is one of the old guards the guy who said the mean thing about Chauncey? Uh, no, sorry. Oh, good. No, he's been sent off, and uh, two new ones. Um, to Kevin, uh, he says, um, I don't think you need any more food, mate. And uh, time to go and see the, the lady. Well, you didn't have to be rude about it. He rolled a natural 20, he did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I suppose we should get started. S- Swift, Swift, wake up. <laughs> Wake up, Swiftfoot. What? We have to go talk to the lady now. Must we? Yes. Is there any booze left over from the party last night? No, for the gods. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm ready. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, opening both the doors, the guards, the small party of guards, four of you, four of them, and you make your way back into, <coughs> um, I- into the... The courtyard with the low, long, shallow pool, and from there there is a, a small staircase that twines up to the top level. You go up the top level, and um, they carry you all, uh, along towards the front of the house. And at the front of the house is a large room, um, and you, as the door is, is open, as you come up to it, you can see that beyond is a is a study or a, a, a reflection room of that kind. Um, you walk in, and everyone roll me a perception check, please. Uh, that is an seven. Unnatural twenty. Yes, sixteen. Another, another one of those unnatural twenty. Um, as you gaze around the room, you see uh, in front of you uh, is a large desk, uh, rich dark <coughs> wood, um, on top of which are reams of papers, uh, scrolls, uh, unfurled, all kinds of uh, different paperwork. Um, most of them are in a, uh, a script that you don't recognise. Uh, it's sort of marks and dashes and, and dots, and uh, it doesn't appear to be uh, what you would consider to be a, a, a common alphabet. Um, on the wall to your right-hand side, as you go in, you see a large map. 
Um, what would you like to do? Um, what does this map look like? Because the last time I was here, I was on like a Caldera island, and I want to know if I'm in the same place or not. This map looks very different. Okay. Um, it seems to be a zoomed in version of a map. Um, so you see a small amount of water at the base, uh -huh. um, which is marked uh, Lake G. Um, and then there is, uh, to the right hand side, there is uh, marked a mountain range and then some hills. And on the hills is uh, drawn a, a settlement. Um, to the left hand side, you see forests. And just from within that, you see another settlement marked. Uh, and in the middle, there is this kind of um, grey land, um, which has been marked out. And there you can see, uh, roll me an investigation check. Uh, tw uh, 13. Uh, yeah, you can see that um, this map has had things written onto it and then erased. Um, there is a sense that... Uh, Things have moved forward and backwards and forwards and backwards across this uh, this land. At the moment, as you look at it, you can see that the line that has been drawn uh, closest to the the, the wooden to, to the forest encampment um, is very close up to where they to where the city is. Could I steal the map? <laughs> uh, you could try. There are people in this room. I would like to contest his theft. <laughs> Roll sleight of hand. Roll a, how, how would you like to contest, uh, con contest it? Uh, pure brute force. Strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. Roll me a strength athletics. Yeah. Athletics, sure. Athletics. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when I have my glasses for people. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks past you, and uh, you see him go to the map. And the map is <coughs> maybe um, <coughs> two meters tall, uh, and... <laughs> Possibly f far three, four meters long. I'm gonna do that. Uh, it is, it is, it is pinned to the wall with these like, um, almost like uh, climbing, whatever the word is that is for those things, oh. something like that. Um, <laughs> and um, as you start to pull them out and roll the map up, the two people in the room say. Is this how we will always have to deal with you people? No, no. Can you be trusted at all? What do you mean yes. by you people? I we, find we, that very we, offensive and we, racist. We absolutely can be trusted. Uh, if, if you could not, just for one second, I, not be I you. I feel like for I'm one being second. accused of things that I haven't done. I, well, I'm fine. Listen. Who, who is standing in front of us? Um, <laughs> you turn around and sat beside behind the desk is the lady of the house and stood further over in a corner, looking out over the, the, the forest beyond through a window, uh, is her husband. Uh, he has his back to you, and he doesn't spot you trying to steal the map, but she most definitely did. Right. <laughs> right, just put it back. Uh, is, is there a chair on the other side of the desk that I can yes. sit in? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to sit in that chair. Then. There are two or three chairs, and there are other chairs dotted around the room, so if yeah. people wanted to sit down. Uh, there are bookcases, and it's, it's a study... Study, come library, come war room. I would go up uh, behind the chair the captain sat in and sort of stand behind it and fold my arms and try and look a little bit uh, like I'm the muscle. <laughs> <coughs> skulk, like by the wall, trying not to get noticed too much. Cool. Are you are you trying to intimidate or are you just trying just, to... Just uh, be, being a presence. Being a presence. Not, <laughs> not in intentionally aggressive. Or she, she sees your presence. <laughs> she is aware of your presence. <laughs> Um, My lady, I don't think we were properly introduced the other night. I'm Captain Golden Height of the Spirit of the Horizon. And these are some of my crewmen. Gregor Swiftfoot, Fat Kevin, and our Chief Scout, Aya. She looks around Can't the room. Can't promoted. <laughs> and she says, I offer a terse welcome to you. My name is Lady Kurus. You are in my villa. This is the house of my family, the Kazule. And she nods over to, my, to, to, the, to the man sitting on the other side and says, my husband, Basra, ignore him, he, he tends to mutter. 
Right. Speak up! And he's over by the window. Oh, uh, 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 welcome, welcome to my house, uh, Mahakirio. Ma uh, <coughs> thanks you and guides you uh, for, for coming to us. Yes, enough, enough, enough. So, you come to this land. What brings you here? We are here on a diplomatic mission uh, in the hopes that we may be able to reopen trade routes and uh, secure peace uh, throughout the island. Peace? Yes. With whom? With the Katafu? Well, ideally, yes. <laughs> um, she, she looks down disdainfully. Um, and you can see that she is, she is contemplating it. And then she says, we have lost too many of our own. We have lost too many in this family itself to, to countenance they have lost, peace. They have lost people too, and it'll only keep going unless you and their leaders sit down and talk this out. We are, we are so close to victory. It's we hard. have had we have had setbacks recently, but yeah. we have always had setbacks. You see, you tell me you're close to victory, but that's what they're saying as well. Ha! The Katafu know nothing of victory. They know only destruction and, and decimation, but, but they know nothing of victory. True victory in the eyes of... She looks across and she says, don't start. <laughs> it's almost as if uh, her husband was about to jump in and make some kind of long, <coughs> long rambling speech about right. how wonderful Mahahirio right. is and how he will guide them. Right. Yeah. Chaps, I'm going to take a massive risk and put some cards on the table. Huh? Okay. This victory you're talking about wouldn't have anything to do with a tablet, would it? She looks at you astonished. How do you know? What, I have what a, do you know of the tablet? I have a very good chief scout. She looks across, I don't darts think her I eyes know across. About the tablet, I, no, I know you don't know. Okay. She darts her eyes across to the to the uh, to you, uh, uh, and she gives you a withering look, as if and she's like she's trying to work out whether she recognizes you, whether she's seen you before, um, how you could possibly have gleaned this information. Um, don't bother trying to get it from her. She is a very very stealthy individual. In fact, I recommend you look away for two seconds and look back, and she'll be gone. <laughs> 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 She doesn't take her eyes off you. <laughs> and she talks out the side of her mouth to the captain. So you know, you know of the tablet? We know some things, and so do the Katavu. Do you have chess on this island? You familiar with the game? <laughs> <laughs> We play games. Hmm. Are you familiar with the word stalemate? I believe we are aware of a word similar. Hmm. You see, from what I've gathered, that's pretty much where this island is at now. And if you two keep fighting, all you'll do is tear each other a apart. And then the island will be ruled by the apes. I'm very confused about what's going on there. She drops her head, and she nods. And she lets out a long sigh. There is much truth in what you say. It is not me that you need to treat with. I rule the people. But there are many among us who are more bloodthirsty and vindictive, mm. and less willing to make sacrifices than we are. Yeah. If only my sister were here. Where is your sister? We do not know. She was with us yesterday, but she lost her son. Heartless, heartless deceit. 
was played and he fell upon the battlefield. She's inconsolable. My sister has a tendency to take matters into her own hands. I cannot control her actions. I wonder, <coughs> I know nothing of where she has gone. All I know is that she snuck out at some point yesterday with a small group. I do not know what she is planning, but if Kiza is up to her usual tricks, it will be something noticeable. Do you know, uh, perhaps we can find, find her at her band and, in, and entreat her before this whole thing descends into madness. Good luck. Could you write a note to your sister that I could present to her? I can. And at this point she grabs a, a pen and a piece of paper and she starts to, uh, to scratch out um, in, uh, in the similar language to the ones that all the other papers are in, mm -hmm. uh, this, this short, short note. Um, uh, and, she, and when she's done that, she she blows on it just to let the air dry the ink, and she folds it up. <coughs> Thank you. Do, you. do you know where she might go? Even just a starting off point would be helpful for us. Recently, she has become enamored of a part of the battlefield that we, for many years, have known to avoid. She spotted <coughs> a discrepancy. At this point, she points towards the map on the wall. And she says, look there. What do you see? Most, <laughs> most, Swift, most, most of the map is still on the wall. <laughs> um, she says, what do you see? Um, and as you peer across, roll an investigation check, everybody. Ooh. 18. Four. Uh, uh, 18. Nine. Cool. Uh, the two people who rolled 18, what, <coughs> what you see on the battlefield, as well as the lines, is um, right in the center of it, towards the top half of the map, um, is marked a small wooded, like a coppice, like a, a glade. Um, and it's quite clearly marked as trees on the map. Um, Golan, you rolled poorly, but nevertheless, you have been onto the battlefield. Yes. You do not remember seeing a small wooded coppice or glade. No. What you remember seeing, in a s roughly the same position as this one, is a mesa, a small, high-sided uh, stone drummond mm. with a flat top. Yeah. And she says, <coughs> we have been staring at this map for so many years that we hadn't noticed the change. We had been thinking only of gains and losses. We could not see the glade for the loss. Akira is a smart one. She saw this, she noticed the discrepancy. I think she intends to explore it. But my sister is a strange one. She is an investigator, but more than an investigator, she is a person of explosive action. Knowing her, she will have thought of some kind of big plan. She won't, she won't just head off on her own. Well, it sounds like if we're gonna catch up to her, there's no time to waste. Yes, and we'll need our weapons back in case we run into trouble. Quite but right. the priority is non-violent solutions. Of course, sir. I really don't want to kill anything today. Um, she, she nods. She says, perhaps you are right. We have lost many. This blood takes its toll on all of us. We will not surrender. 
but we may be, be we may be willing to engage in a tertiary dialogue, at least to see how the ground lies. Well, in that case, may I have a, a second piece of parchment to deliver to the Kotafu of that thing to pay for? Um, yes, yeah, she takes a piece of paper and she, she scrolls across it this time in, in common. Um, uh, it says a uh, very simple basic, like, <coughs> I, Lady Kurus Kazulep, uh, have given permission for this person to <coughs> travel through the battlefield. Please leave him un alone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, she doesn't fully know exactly how to deal with her, how to, how to give you a piece of paper that lets you deal with her mortal enemy. Yeah. Um, but she's more sort of, this is like, I approve of this person and I don't want you to kill him and I don't want <coughs> to kill him, let's, let's, let's be friends. Cool. Um, at least with this person. Useful. Um, uh, as that, at that point she sort of nods, the guards go out, they come back with, the, with all of your yeah. weaponry, um, they hand them back out Thanks. to you. Oh, uh, one more thing, ladies. Uh, the way I run a ship is slightly un unorthodox and I can imagine being thrust into a difficult situation. Uh, I'm a big fan of rewarding hard work. Um, if there's another rung of the ladder that Visa could climb on, it might be worth keeping her closer. Visa is my closest. She is my confidant, my closest companion, and my daughter's best friend. She could not be closer to my heart or my person. I appreciate that you see her in the light that I do. Um, with your stuff in your hands, mm -hmm. yeah. um, you are free to make your way out of the house. <laughs> Just breathing in the nice morning air. Just before we I leave, not killed anything. could I ask the lady of the manor, <coughs> what were the guards drinking last night? <laughs> <laughs> um, she, she smiles and says, last night was the Feast of the Dragon. We drank the finest dragon's wine. We shipped it in specially. Are there any barrels left? <laughs> there may be a half barrel around. Could we take it with us on our journey? It might come in a little bit... You're carrying it. <laughs> um, she looks at you, and it's not dismissive, but it is... Um, she looks at you and she says, small person, these barrels are large. If you wish to take one, feel free. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, she, uh, as, as you're walking out, uh, one of the servants from the house approaches you, carrying a barrel probably around about this big, um, the bottom third of which has, uh, has this deep, thick, it almost looks like a blood, um, but it's this deep, thick, burgundy wine sloshes around in it and he sort of walks up <laughs> and he offers to be like well it's yours now your problem and he walks off I'd be, uh, I'd be happy to help with that if you want to <laughs> all I would ask is that I get the first drink of course why not now great idea <laughs> I'll even make it lighter <laughs> Do you drink from it? Are you coming, are you? <laughs> I guess. Um, you, you reach in with your hands, presumably? Of course. With your hands, scoop it up. It tastes super saccharine, so sweet. But there is a heady, floral scent to it that sort of feels... <coughs> and you immediately feel this warm burn as it comes down the throat, hits the stomach. Roll me a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Ooh, wonderful. You've got a lot of constitution, right? You're fat, Kevin. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, 19. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you feel warm and merry. This stuff is potent. Mm. It's wonderful. super potent. And um, if you keep drinking it at a great rate, um, you will become drunk much quicker than you would normally become drunk. Mm. Even for fat Kevin. <laughs> Are you drinking it as well? I might just fill up my flask. You fill up your flask, wonderful. Um, and you're gonna carry the barrel, are you? I will hoist it above my head. Fix the thing up on his shoulder um, and, and wanders off towards it. And you make your way out through, the, uh, through the, the small village town, through the trees, um, and eventually you come towards uh, what is a, a short wooden wall with a gate in it. Um, 
the guards on either side of it stop you, but you show them the, the parchment and they sort of nod. The, one of the gates opens slightly to allow you exit. And as you go through, you see that on the other side of this, there is a deep trench. Um, it's like a palisade yeah. kind of yeah. trench wall thing. Um, uh, beyond you, the, the trees thin out. And in front of you, you can see the grey, orange, desiccated landscape where this battle has been going on for you know not how long. Could, um, could I say something very quickly to Aya as we're walking? Yeah. Very, very fast. Yep. Cool. Uh, you know, I, I was uh, serious about the chief scout thing. I mean, somebody, not really somebody hides on a ship for a matter of weeks. You've got to be impressive in some regard. <laughs> Thanks, but you still owe me that favor. I know I do. But the other great thing about being an official crewman is you get your own cabin, which means anywhere you're currently sleeping <laughs> in, you'll need to vacate, of course. <clears throat> oh, it's As a you shame. I was having fun. As you have this conversation, you look out across the battlefield to the uh, mountains beyond and to the hill on which the Katafu settlement stands. And as you are stood there watching, you see in the distance just in front of the Katafu settlement. A huge explosion. <laughs> and that's where we're going to end this hour. No! Uh, thank you so much for joining <coughs> us. We're doing this at 3 p.m., 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every single day for Fringe. Uh, we're also live doing the whole thing on twitch.tv forward slash adventurous wanted. Live tweeting it at adventurous250. Um, I'm going to let, it's just, I don't know, Chad and Florence do quick cheeky plugs for the other things they're working on at the Fringe. Yes, that's right. I'm in a sketch comedy double act. We're called Dirty White Boys. Mm -hmm. Our show this year is called Stupid, which is an Brilliant summation of its content. It's very fast-paced, two Ronnie's Morecambe and Wise style sketch show. Uh, it's on every day at Just the Tonic of the Caves on Cowgate at 20 past nine. Uh, it's a pay what you want show, so it's free to get in, or because it's a two for one day, two pound 50 to guarantee a seat if you're going in pairs. Uh, I've got some flyers on the chair at the end there if you want to grab them on the way out. Be lovely to have you. Um, I'm doing two things. I am in a show called Agony Uncles of Science, uh, where we peep solve people's everyday problems with science. We're on every day at 9.15 at Barbados and it's free. And then I'm also putting on the Vagina Museum's first ever art exhibition. Um, and we're running two events for that. It's at Woodland Creatures. A poetry night on the 15th at 6 p.m. and a comedy night on the 22nd at 6 p.m. And again, I do have flyers. Lovely. Uh, so we've now got to do a quick turnaround for our next hour, but thanks so much for joining us and staying on. Uh, and have a lovely day. Yay! Yay. Yay. Oh. Sorry, it's my combat. Oh, it's